What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am with my brother Yasir and we're going to be showing you by popular request a core compression follow along routine where we're going to be stretching our hamstrings and our lumbar spine and we're going to be strengthening our core and our hip flexors. If you missed our previous video, top five core compression exercises, I'm gonna link it up right here and down in the description. Please check out that video, it's going to give you an insight of what core compression is. And if you combine those five exercises with this routine, which I recommend that you do it two to three times per week, you're gonna see improvement in your core compression like you've never seen before. And all your positions like the pike stretch, the pancake stretch, the V-sit and all straight arm hands and presses are going to be improving as well. With that being said, this routine is more on the intermediate level, but do not worry as any of all of our routines, we're gonna be giving you modifications to all the exercises. So if you are a complete beginner, do not get scared by this routine. Yasir is going to be demonstrating the easier variation of the exercises, and I'm gonna be demonstrating the more advanced variation of those exercises. To modify the exercises, by the way, you're going to be needing a couple of blocks two blocks ideally, and if you don't have a blocks, you can have a couple of books that you can stack together. The purpose of the blocks is to simply elevate your hands from some of the positions, most of them actually, to reduce the amount of core compression that you need, therefore making the exercises a little bit easier. Also, a little blanket or maybe another block or another book might become handy to elevate your seat bones if you're struggling to sit down in like a 90 degree angle in like a seated forward fold, for example. For that one, I'm going to recommend our hamstring flexibility routine for beginners which I'm also going to link up right here and with that being said finally we're not going to be needing any warm-ups for this routine the warm-up is going to be included in the routine so the only thing that you need is your presence your mat your blocks and you can jump right into the routine however I want to advise you that the hamstrings we're going to be going very deep into the hamstrings and it's a long routine so if you're not that used to stretch the hamstrings that much please do not overstretch meaning that do not go to your maximum depth way too quickly build it up slowly and as your body begins to open up then you might be able to get deeper in your position do not rush it and if you're a complete beginner maybe just do a fraction of the routine and build it up until you can do the full routine and if you're an advanced practitioner this routine is going to challenge you anyways with that being said i'll see you all in your mat All right, family, are you guys ready? Are you ready, brother? Oh, yes. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna begin standing either in the top of your mat or in the middle of your mat. We're gonna be doing some uh, front kicks. So if you have something in front of you, make sure you don't have anything in front of you. Just stand tall, open your hands uh, forward to receive, round down through your feet, and bring your attention to your breathing first. Feel free to close your eyes or keep them slightly open. And become aware of the sensations of your body. Do your best to keep a steady breath throughout the practice, even in those moments where it becomes challenging, especially on the moments that it becomes challenging. Whenever you're ready, feel free to open your eyes. If you're not open already, I'm gonna begin, shift the weight towards your left foot and hover the right foot off the mat. Place the right hand in front of you, find your balance first, and then you're gonna kick. Kind of explosive, but not too fast, is the first movement that we're doing. We're gonna go for 10 of those. So that was one, let's go four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Switch legs. You can have your right hand on your hip for stability. Switch the weight towards your right, over the left foot, Bring the hand in front of you and foot to hand, not hand to foot. Keep the hand on one single place. That's for two, Go for eight more. Three, four, core engage. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Shift the way again towards the left. Bring the right knee towards you as high as you can go. Even use your hands and compress it to your body as much as possible and lift your chest. Let's see how high it can get. This is basically compression is getting our chest to our thighs as much as we can. Now, whenever you had it, try to release and use the strength to keep it up. 
might drop a little bit, but hold it there, hold it there. Now hold here for 10 seconds. If you're feeling optimistic today, you can strengthen the leg. If not, just keep it bent for five, four, three, two, one, and release. Shift the weight towards the right, over the left foot, bring the knee towards your chest, hug it into you, lift your sternum up, hold it for three, two, one, release your hands, use your hip flexors to keep it high. And if you feel optimistic, one more time, or if you did it on the other side, I'm gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and release the leg. Maybe walk to the front of your mat if you're not there already. We're gonna be doing five uh, standing good mornings. Your feet can be hips distance apart. Place your hands on your hips. And this applies to all the forward folds we're gonna be doing is begin anterior tilt in your pelvis, lower down, keeping your back flat. Only go as far as you can go, maybe soft bend the knees, but not too much, engage your quads as well, and then push yourself up. There's gonna be one, actually go for five more of those, keeping your back as flat as possible. Let's go. One, inhale as you go up, then exhale as you go down. Two, three, Four, engage your transverse abdominal, pull the belly bottom up to your spine. Last one, chest up, full, anteriorly tilt. Hold here, hold, hold, hold. Now begin to round, keeping that anterior pelvic tilt. Use your breath as an exhalation to lower down. Maybe you can place some blocks here if your hands doesn't get to the floor. Or you can grab opposite elbows and just relax your head, relax your body and move side to side. Keep actively getting that anterior pelvic tilt to compress as much as you can and creating length into the hamstrings. Slowly release your hands on the mat. You're allowed to bend your knees slightly for this one if your hands doesn't get to the, to the mat. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And the most important part is that you're compressing your abdomen and your chest towards your knees and begin to walk your feet back. You can be in your tiptoes if that's easier for you, or you can be right here. Again, bend your legs as much as you can, and we're gonna meet up in downward facing dog. Once you get to a comfortable position, externally turn your shoulders, press it strongly with your arms. Arms are completely straight. You can even pedal out your feet to begin opening a little bit more into the hamstrings. Move with your breath. Whenever you're ready, find stillness in the pose. Using your breath, begin to walk your hands now towards your feet. Again, you can slightly bend your knees whenever you need to, or if you can keep them straight, keep them straight. And if you're keeping them straight, make sure your quad is activated to protect the knee. And stand, stop here on back of the mat, forward fold. Grab opposite elbows if you feel, if you like that at the beginning, or just have your hands on the ground and move side to side. Maybe even bend one leg at a time. Do whatever feels good to your body to really open up into the hamstrings. And whenever you're ready, find stillness in the pose. Again, you can place a couple blocks if you don't reach the floor. Slowly we're gonna raise one vertebra at a time to standing. Keep everything hollow, hollow, hollow. Keep the chin tucked to your chest. And the last thing that lift is going to be your shin. Shin lifting last. Little warm up. We're gonna keep, keep warming up still. We're gonna bring the right foot just up, uh, right in front of the left foot. No separation between them. And the back foot, the left, is gonna be pivot for around 45 degree angle. You're going to flex the right foot you're going to fall, keeping your back as flat as possible. And then either the hands on a block or on the floor, if you can get here. We're gonna do little pulses walking forward, and then we're gonna keep walking until the end of the mat. So five pulses, and then we're gonna keep walking. So with the blocks, gonna be right here, this one 45 degree angle, flex your foot to stretch a little bit on the calf muscles as well. Create length and pulse for one, two, three, four, Five, plant the foot, left foot forward, right foot 45 degree angle, flex, inhale with your chest, exhale for five, four, three, two, 
one, plant the left foot, bring the right foot forward, left foot 45 degree angle, flex, keep the flexing. It's a tendency that when we're pulsing, we stop the flexing, two more, one, two, plant the foot, left forward, right 45 degree angle, left uh, foot, plantar flex, dorsiflex, <laughs> go for 10, actually five, four, three, two, one, bring the right foot to meet the left foot, Last one, keeping the feet together and not flex this time. Grab opposite elbows and 10 forward. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Relax and use your inhale to rise all the way up. And stand tall in mountain pose. Allow your eyes to close. Feel the new energy and the new heat that you have created in your body. Slowly blink open your eyes. Whenever you're ready, inhale, arms up. Once in salutation to keep warming up a little bit more. Exhale, forward fold, a little bit of a faster pace. Inhale, halfway lift, lift your chest and your sternum. Exhale, plant the hands, bring both feet back to plank pose. Take an inhale on plank, shift the weight forward. Exhale, lower down chaturanga, arms at a 90 degree angle. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, shoulders down and back. Exhale, downward facing dog. If you need to rest, you can rest in child's pose. We're only gonna be here through breath. So maybe stay with me. One, two. On the next inhale, raise the right leg up. Exhale, knee to nose, protract your shoulders, engage the core. Inhale, right leg up, one more time. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, one more. Exhale, compress the knee to nose. Now try to bring the foot in, the, in between your hands without trying to not to touch. And lower down for low lunge. Inhale, drop your back knee. Inhale for low lunge. Only one breath in here. Exhale, use your hands to transition to runner stretch or half split. Ideally, your hips are stacked on top of your knees. If you need some blocks to find some stability, find some stability. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale, fold and find length through your spine. Catch your breathing one more time. Return to your body. Return to your center. I'm gonna be doing a drill, lifting the leg. I'm gonna show it first. Five pulses up, and then we're going to fold and relax. Type of a PNF type of stretching, we're going to be engaging our hip flexors and then by reflex our hamstrings are going to be stretching. Modifications for this one, your hands either on a block and the higher you are, the easier it's going to be. The more you fall and you try to lift, the harder it's going to be. So even if you're doing the blocks, depending on the setting, you have three settings there. If you are right here, you have less angle, which is easier to compress. Just do your best and even if your leg doesn't lift up, just the action of driving the leg up and engaging the hip flexors will allow your hamstrings to loosen up and will build some strength. I'm gonna go only for five pulses plus a little hole at the top. So find your position and begin in three, two, one, lift for one. Try to not touch the floor, only one inch and two, three, four. If you get a cram, that's five. Five, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Flex the foot, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, hold and relax. Do your forms come to the mat, maybe all your blocks. Wherever you are in your journey, just accept that. Let's go for one more round. <laughs> Put your hands into the block, point your toes, lift your chest, bring it up for five, four, three, two, one, plant it up. Actually, hold it. Five, four, three, two, one, flex the foot, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, fall into the hamstrings isometrically drag the heel towards you to have a little bit of engagement in the hamstrings as we open them. Now, another PNF exercise we're gonna be doing, only one round. We're gonna be dragging the heel towards us, towards the, our hips as much as possible. That's gonna engage our hamstrings. We're gonna do that for five seconds and then we're gonna relax for 10 seconds. Ready? So drag it towards you in three, two, one. As hard as you can go, five, be careful, four, three, Two, one, inhale, lift your chest and exhale, four. Three breaths in here. 
on that mm. variation. Uh, do we want to plant our flex? It, uh, I would actually recommend to plant our flex, uh, to dorsiflex as much as we can, so we also get the uh, the calf muscles involved in stretching. But if it's too much, small plantar flexion can be okay. I'm gonna be doing some drills in pointed and some drills in here. Which one do you like best? Uh, dorsiflexing, because I mean, I, I tend okay. to go to the hardest way. <laughs> okay, okay, I like that, I like that. So take advice from him and go the hard way. Plant your hands, shift the weight forward to lunge. Now try to hover the foot as much as you can, even if you need to bend it, go back to plank pose. That requires a little bit of compression, you need to use blocks, that's perfect. Shift the weight forward, vinyasa. Before we go into the second side, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right away into the second side, inhale, lift your left leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring the heel towards your hamstring as much as possible to compress. Inhale, one more time. Exhale, knee to nose. Plant the foot, trying to keep as much compression as possible. Drop the right knee. Inhale for low lunge. Take another breath here. And exhale, send the hips back. Curl your toes to find stability. Plantar flex. <laughs> Inhale with your chest, find some uh, length through your spine. And exhale, fold. Two breaths in here before we do everything that we did on the other side. <laughs> so whenever you're ready, find your position, whether that is here, whether that is here on your blocks, or whether that is here compressed. Now go four, point your toes in this in this variation. I'm gonna go for five up, plus a hold, three, two, one, bring it up for five, four, three, two, one, hold for five, four, three, Two, one, dorsiflex, inhale with your chest and fold. Second round, adjust your position, lift your chest, point your toes in three, two, one, lift it up for five, four, three, two, one, hold for five, four, three, two, one, dorsiflex, inhale with your chest and fold, relax as best to the best of your abilities. If you didn't get the five reps, that's okay. You're building up to this. And if the leg didn't move up, that's fine. Maybe modify a little bit more the next time. Maybe pause the video and try it again. Or once again, it's just the action of driving forward that is going to create the strength. One PNF round, adjust your position. We're again, we're dragging the heel isometrically towards us to engage the hamstring, and then we fall. We engage in three. In this case, I actually uh, dorsiflex. Dorsiflex. Okay. Dorsi okay. Three. And I found also, sorry, no, I found also that I'm driving my heel in yes. this direction rather than that direction. That's right? actually, yeah, that's actually a great observation. It's actually down and towards you, because if you only do it towards you, yeah, you might just bring the heel down, and the hamstrings create both a hip, well, hip extension in these two directions. It's gonna emphasize it more. Simply push down and towards you. Great point. Three, two, one, drag it for five, four, three, two, one, and release, fall deeper. Two more breaths in here. Hold the pose, try to relax the mind, relax the body. If you feel a sharp pain, maybe back off a little bit. Doesn't matter how the pose looks, as long as you're feeling the stretch. Slowly bring the weight forward, very low lunge, contra pose. Plant your hands, shift the weight back, plank pose, use your blocks if you need it. Exhale, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana, 90 degree angles. Inhale, inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, actually child's pose. Bring your knees together, so we promote a little bit more roundiness on the lumbar spine. And bring your hands here to the side to give our shoulders a break as well. Those downward facing dogs are not easy. If you don't practice yoga regularly, 
that's our resting pose, <laughs> but it takes time to build up to there. So if, if at any time of the practice you need to rest, feel free to rest. Two breaths here in a stillness to calm the body, prepare us for what's next. Slowly come up, bring the hands forward and downward facing up. Back to our resting pose. <laughs> now we're gonna be doing a drill. I'm actually demonstrate it first. We're gonna inhale the right leg up and then we're going to shift and we're gonna try to touch our toes to our wrist. Now, a couple things that we do here to, to get this action. First one is we're going to our toes of the opposite leg to create some more space. Second, you're gonna get it as far as you can go. There's gonna be a point of blockiness. There you shift the way forward. Basically, you're closing the shoulders and you allow your toes to touch your wrist. Here's gonna use in block. Can you demonstrate an easier variation? Also, you can bend your leg, the leg that is coming forward, as much as you need to in order to touch the, your wrist. Now keep it as straight as you possibly can. But the most important part is this part to compress to your abdomen. Yes, 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 yes. And if it, if it doesn't touch, that's fine, but he touched it right there. If that setting doesn't serve you, you can even increase the setting. Can you show with a bent leg variation? Bend the leg, that's totally fine. As long as he's trying consciously to keep the thigh as close to the chest as possible, that is totally fine. And once again, if he gets up to here, if you try the other leg so you don't get in balance. Mm -hmm. If he gets up to here, that's totally fine. And what, what he just did right there, that's also what I want you guys to do. It's not a full downward facing dog. You're gonna be walking a slightly bit forward. So it's kind of a close stand downward facing dog. Find your position. This is a very, very advanced movement and it requires practice. That's why elevate your hands as much as you need to and tiptoe your feet as much as you need to and bend your leg as much as you need to. If you feel it right here on your hip flexor and you feel that you're compressing and also on your rectus abdominal, then you're doing the exercise right. Ready for this? I'm gonna begin yep. with the right leg. So bring it up to downward facing dog. Inhale with the right leg up. Exhale, do your best to touch your right wrist. Inhale, right leg up. Four more. Exhale, touch. Inhale, up. Exhale, touch. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Now hold it there. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Bring it in the middle of your hands now. Bring the back foot a little bit forward, like two to three feet distance apart. Pivot up a 45 degree angle. Inhale with your chest. Please use blocks if you don't get to the floor. Lengthen your spine and fall for pyramid pose. Make sure your hips are going square. You're going in this plane of motion. Both heels are stacked. Just a passive stretch, so just hold it here. And if you want the challenge, brother, plantar flex, uh, dorsiflex. I got something with plantar flex and dorsiflex too. <laughs> Back leg is straight. Back leg is straight and engage. It's not like you're just dumping into the right leg. Mm -hmm. Both legs are active, especially your, your quad and your glute medius. So stabilize your hips and then just fall in here, either here or here. Three breaths in here. It's a little passive stretch. Maybe take a deep inhale, lengthen a little bit more through the spine, and exhale, fall a little bit deeper. Again, watch out for overstretching your hamstrings. Keep the legs as active as possible. It's called a passive stretch, but we're doing a lot in here, so. <laughs> Not so passive. Inhale, press your hands, try to hover the foot back. If you need to bend it, perfect, that's beautiful. Back to downward facing dog. If you need a little rest, you can rest. We're gonna go right away into the second side, just to keep this video short. Inhale, with your left leg up. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale, leg up. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale, exhale, two more. Inhale, bring the quad as, as closer to your core as possible. Last one, inhale. Exhale, touch, bring the foot forward. Peel the right foot, 45 degree angle, close your stand a little bit. Both legs are strong. Inhale with your chest. 
and exhale forward four. For all the people that ask why we sweat so much, first of all, the routine is hard. <laughs> Second of all, we live in Miami. So. <laughs> but I mean, it allows for a deeper stretch anyways. It's on to your breathing. If you need to rest, please do. If this was already too much, you can finish it another day. But if you are with us, I encourage you to keep going. Inhale with your chest, use your hands to spin towards the right and pivot both foot so they are facing the side of your mat, great. And simply rise up for this wide-legged stand. We're gonna be doing what we did in the front of the mat, a good mornings, but now with our open legs, and then we're just gonna fold and relax. Ready? Should I put the blocks right in, yes, in the, in put the, the center? Yes, the blocks right beneath you. Great question for when you fall. For the uh, good mornings, just keep your back as flat as possible, but then when you round and fall, keep those blocks handy to stay in there. And then I'm gonna show an advanced variation if you just wanna go deeper into the forward fall. So let's go for only five of those. Inhale, lift your chest, and tilt to your pelvis. Exhale, fall. Inhale, back up. Two, fall. Isometrically drag those feet together to activate our abductors. Inhale. Exhale for three. Inhale. Exhale for four. As you fall, pull the belly bottom up to your spine. Engage your transverse abdominal. Send the hips back. Inhale. Last one. Exhale down. Get to your maximum depth with your back flat. Then begin to round like a C motion. Forward, forward, forward. Maybe you get your hands. Maybe you get your forearms. Or maybe you are in your blocks. Now, for all the advanced pips, if you can get your head to touch the ground, maybe close your stand. That's gonna challenge more uh, your hamstrings. If you are too open, this is easy to get here, easy. So if you're here, <laughs> if you can get the, the head, or if you don't, you can begin walking your hands behind and just get a deeper stretch. Whatever you are, here, 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 that's your position. We're gonna hold it there for three to five breaths. So relax as much as you can. Soft bend in the knees is okay. If you have them fully straight, make sure you're engaging your quads. And breathe. Another option is to grab your toes. Inhale, lift your chest and fall deeper. One more breath, lift the chest, create length with your inhalation, create depth with your exhalation. Using the strength of your legs, roll all the way up, maybe support with your hands, strong, strong, strong legs, raise all the way up. Pivot both foot, feet to the front of your mat and stop to the top of your mat. Stand heel tall for just one breath, maybe close your eyes, come back to your body, your body, and return to your breathing. And if this is hard, allow it to be hard, be proud of yourself. And if this is too easy, keep challenging yourself. You're gonna be lowering, begin bending your knees. Our goal is to compress our chest to our thighs as we lower down, really get into an anterior pelvic tilt. Once you get here, you can use your hands for balance here or here. We're gonna transition into Navasana or bolt pose. So compress, compress, basically like a low squat. And whenever you fall, then simply you just rock back. Try to do it as controlled as possible to really work on that uh, eccentric contraction for compression. Once you lower down, lift your legs up for bolt pose, hands forward, lift your chest and hold. Variation is to keep your legs bent, perfect. And we're gonna be moving in two positions from boat hole into a hollow body hole, and then back to boat pose. So variations will be bent legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need the blocks on this one, maybe. Uh, extend to low to hollow body hole, and then bring it up. And maybe keep your legs slightly high when you lower down. When you lower down, lower down, maybe keep it this high if it's too hard, if your lower back begins to arch. Work with your position, advanced variation would be 
arms up, touch, arms down, basically V-ups. Do the easiest one for them to see and I'll do the, I'm gonna do the intermediate one for intermediate practitioners. So inhale, lift your chest, boat hold, hold for three, two, one, lower down, whole body hold, engage your glutes, posterior to your pelvis, inhale, and to your pelvis, lift your chest. Exhale, lower down. Three more, up, down, up, down. One more, up, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Lower the legs forward and sit up in your seated forward fold. Inhale, lift your chest, exhale, fold. Relax a little bit in here. You can place some blocks right, right there as he's doing it. <laughs> like, you know it. <laughs> also, if you cannot sit in a 90 degree position, we we'll encourage you to place a blanket or something to elevate your seat bones so you can really focus on the hamstrings and not so much on roundiness on your lumbar spine. You can, no, you can also place a block and that will facilitate. Whichever is better for you, a couple blocks here or a block here, or maybe a couple pillows here and a block here, or maybe you don't even need a block, but the block here assists you so you can relax into the position. Let's be here for three breaths, calming down the mind, calming down the body, in whichever length and depth of your position you are. So do we keep our chin tucked? Our chin tucked to our chest? Yes. Or neutral. Actually, when we do some most compression things, we're, we want to think about our entire spine. But in this case, I think neutral should be good. You don't want to be not even here, or you don't want to be here either. So a neutral head in creating. It's the same like you don't want to be rounding like this much. You want to be always creating length, and then you allow gravity to do its work. Slowly begin to come up. L-sit. <laughs> We're doing two rounds of L-sit combined with a seated forward fall. This is mostly how I got my compression, doing a strength work and then doing a passive flexibility or a dynamic flexibility. I'm gonna be doing that to several positions now, sitting down. First one is gonna be an L-sit. Modification is gonna be a top L-sit or using blocks for that. Tuck L-sit with blocks is the easiest one. If you already have an L-sit, you can do it on blocks still. If you wanna try it on the floor, you can try it on the floor. If you wanna practice your V-sit and you're working towards the V-sit, this will be the time to do so. I'm not gonna get into V-sit training. If you want a V-sit routine, you can leave it up. <laughs> Let me know down below. But we're gonna be doing L-sit. But again, it's a, a, it's a place for you to explore. And if you can, if you're here on your, in your V-sit, you're working towards that 180 degree, then this will be the moment to do it. Ready for this? I'm gonna hold Let's it go. only for five to seven seconds and then relaxing for about 10 seconds. So whenever you're ready, three, two, one, lift it up, push the hip forward, 90 degree angle for five, four, three, two, one. Flex your foot, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, fall. Slowly come back up. Round number two. Three, two, one. El sit hold, hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, inhale with your chest and exhale. Three breaths in here. I know it's tough. El sit in the floor is not an easy task. Even if you're using a bunch of blocks and you're bending your legs, that's totally fine. Even when you repeat this, if that was way too hard, you can stay there. Okay. <laughs> you can get I'll into just this position, <laughs> even with blocks elevated, just to get that lifting sensation. You can also work on your fingertips. Always modify according to your level. Yes, the opposite is hard, but there are ways to work around it, and you don't need to scratch a complete exercise just because it is way too hard. You can always modify that exercise. Seated by compressions. <laughs> Another nemesis. Oh, yes. <laughs> one so, after the other. <laughs> one after the other. So the L-sit is getting our body to get into this 90 degree position. Seated by compression, we begin this 90 degree position and even forward. We're gonna bring our legs up, one inch from the floor and down. We're gonna be going for six only. You can go for 10 if you're feeling optimistic today. Let's go six, 
six second hold, and then we fall one more time, two rounds of those. To modify, you can either place your hands behind to reduce this angle that you have and try to lift your legs right here. If that doesn't happen, simply work on one leg at a time. Maybe do three on one side, three on the other side, close the hole, and then we fall. The more forward your hands are, the harder the exercise is going to be. For that one, you can check top five core compression exercises, more details about this exercise. But without further ado, you ready for this? You can also place the hands on the blocks. If you're on your fingertips, it's easier. If your palms down, it's going to be a little bit challenging. Let's get to it. You ready? Three, two, one, lean forward, lift for one. One inch, two, three, four, five, six, hold for six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Open your legs to the width of your mat. Inhale, lift your chest, exhale, forward, fall. Maybe place a block right here. Or not. <laughs> How did that feel? That was good. Okay. Feel more open? I'm this close to getting in cramp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, we, then you need to lift a little bit more so you get the cramp. So you get those good. No. I mean, cramps are normal, but if you don't get a cramp, it's not that you are not working hard enough. Mm -hmm. But if you get a cramp, just know that you are working hard enough. <laughs> Second round, bring both legs together. Point your toes, adjust with blocks or leaning back as you need today. We're gonna go for Six again. So lean forward, lift your chest. Three, two, one, lift it up for one, two, three, four, five, six, hold for six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, open to the width of your mat, inhale, exhale, fall. Once again, if six was way too hard, even with the easy variation, just work on doubles. Pause the video, maybe do three rounds, or just do the entire routine with those numbers. And as you do this routine over and over, your compression is gonna increase, your flexibility is going to increase, your mobility and your strength. And if six was way too easy, then you can always do 10, you can always add ankle weight. <laughs> Slowly bring yourself up. Pancake time. <laughs> ankle weight. Yeah. Open your legs, ideally 90 degree angle, don't no need to go more than that. That way we actually target the hamstrings. Now we're targeting more the middle side of the hamstrings, the internal side of the hamstrings, just because our legs are open. We're gonna begin with just one round of that same exercise that we did, but in a straddle. Our hands are gonna be forward. We're gonna be pointing our toes, lifting up. This one is a little bit more challenging. Play around with the width that you have. And also, if that's too much, just lean back one leg, the other leg. As long as you feel it on this huge muscle right here, right here, rectus femoris and the iliopsoas, then you're good to go. Which variation are you gonna do? I'll try this one. I'll try this one. And then exactly. scale the back. Fingertips or hands to a little bit more intense. So go for only five on this and five second hold, and then we just fall forward. Three, two, one, lift it up for five, four, three, two, one, hold for five, four, three, Two, one, inhale with your chest and exhale full. You will forget the hole for some reason. Anterior to your pelvis, externally rotate your legs, find space. And again, you can be here. If you are right here, just the action of your pelvis going down. And if you're right here, you are feeling the stretch. That's the position that you need to be today. That's totally fine. As you advance in your practice, maybe lower to your forearms, place a couple of blocks to assess yourself. Or if you got the full pancake, you can go for the full pancake. Three breaths in here. With every inhalation, lift your chest slightly higher. And still fall slightly deeper. Play around with activating your quads, then releasing. Move around. Stretching doesn't have to be fully, fully passive, even passive stretches. Moving around, finding those, I mean, hamstrings is several strings, so you, if you move around, you might find different areas that are tight. Slowly come back up. Now, we're gonna be doing some ballistic forward. Again, you can do another round of that one if that was not enough, but I think that was enough for now. Ballistic stretching, we're gonna be going 10, 
forward in this direction. Ballistic simply means that if this is my max, I'm gonna be trying to always reach for even beyond of what my passive max is. Be careful on this one, it's not like you're going, to, I'm gonna get towards the camera, but get always trying to get a little bit farther and farther away, teaching your body that this is a safe position to be. 10 forward, 10 completely to the side, 10 completely to the side, five more forward, and then we fall and we relax. You guys ready for this? Lift your chest until it's your pelvis. Place your hands in front of you. Keep lifting your chest, take a deep inhale. Exhale, fold. And begin pulsing for 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch it to the right for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make sure your right seat bone, left seat bone is touching the floor, not going up. 2, 1, towards the left. 1, 2, right hip down. 5, 4, 3, Two, one, forward, legs are active. Let's go as far as you can go for five, four, three, two, one. Lift your chest, inhale, exhale, relax. We're gonna be here for five breaths. So find a uncomfortably comfortable position for you to be in. Just breathe and observe any subtle changes within your body and within your mind. be here for three more breaths <clears throat> since it's almost the last stretch that we're doing feel free to walk your hands slightly forward use your inhalation to go deeper actually higher and your exhalation to go deeper Slowly and mindfully begin to come out of the posture. Slow and control. Telling your body that this is a safe position, even though it sucks sometimes. <laughs> Bring your legs together, you can assist with yourself. If they are a little bit in pain. Bend your knees slightly. So, windshield wipers towards the right, towards the left. You can put the block aside. I'm gonna be doing plow pose. Maybe okay. you get for those. Mm -hmm. Massage a little bit on the hips, get some movement on the legs. It was a lot on the hamstrings. If you are not used to this, it might be a lot. If you already make it this far into the uh, class, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, brother. <laughs> not an easy feat. Come back to center. We're gonna be doing a last passive stretch, which is plow pose. Lay down on your back. We're gonna begin lifting our legs on a 90 degree angle. Keep your hands down on the floor for stability. Lift your chest and go right back towards the room. And land your feet. Flex and land. So you also stretch your calf. Whenever you feel the position, you're allowed to stay here. You're allowed to slightly bend your knees or you're allowed to clasp your hands behind your back and open through the chest. Not needed. This is not a compression this one in particular, but what I'm looking for is this roundiness through the spine. We're gonna be here for five breaths. If you wanna go deeper, you can bend your legs and get towards the floor. And place your hands right here. And play around with activating your rectus abdominal to create more roundiness in your lumbar spine and your upper spine, and then release. Also, walk your feet back if you feel like you have space. If you feel any tension in your neck, please back off and make sure the weight is on your shoulders. This is a shoulder stand, not a back neck stand. Slowly, one vertebra at a time, begin to roll forward. You can use your hands to assist you either here or here. Compress as much as you can. Slowly moving with your breath. 
releasing the legs to the four corners of your mat. Let's do a final twist to neutralize our spine. Bring the left knee towards you. Your exhale twist towards the right. You're gonna look at the left shoulder. back to center, and strengthen the left leg, bring the right knee towards you, twist over to the left, extend the right arm towards the right, and gaze at your right shoulder. Inhale back to center. Bring both knees towards you. Enjoy these new compression gains <laughs> you have to acquire. Feel proud about yourself for making it this far. Once again, it's not an easy task. After this, feel free to lay down in Shavasana, laying down in your back to absorb all the benefits of the practice and observe any subtle difference in your body and mind. If not, feel free to rock forward with us and sit down in a cross-legged position. Whether you're laid down or sitting down, relax your hands, your hands, relax your entire body and allow your eyes to close. Whatever you did today, just know that that's enough. Simply be an observer of your experience. Let go of any resistance that you might still carry with you. And simply let go. Showing up is the hardest part of any endeavor that we engage with. So if you, are, if you made it to this part, feel proud and however the poses look for you, that doesn't truly really matter. However intense it was for you, it doesn't truly really matter to the point that we need to be concerned about it. You simply need to observe, learn from it and move on. Bring both hands to Anjali Mudra to pray your hands wants to touch each other. One last collective breath. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Thank you all for sharing this practice with us. May all living beings be happy and free. Namaste. Feel free to open your eyes. How did that feel? Thank you. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for sharing it with me. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for, again, sharing this practice with us. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe if you're new to this channel. Comment down below what else we like to see on this channel. And let us know how was this practice. Did you enjoy it? Was it too hard? Was it too easy? Do you want a shorter version of this routine? Do you want a two hour version of this routine? Let us know down below and for more routines like this one and for calisthenics, yoga, hand balancing, primal element, yeah, home workouts, uh, our workout creator, our music and everything that is the SM Academy, it, all the description is gonna be down in the description. You can sign up for that and get access to all. Entire library of courses, workout programs and or workout creator, which you have individual moves that you can create your own workouts. But basically, all the information is going to be down in the description. We hope to see you there. And with that being said, I will see you all next week. Much love. <laughs> We're handshake right there. <laughs> We're handshake like Blooper. Oof. Pa, 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 pa. Sí.